Guys, this is something that has taken me, I shit you not, over six years to finally learn. And it's something that had I known at the very start of my tripping career, well, it would have helped me tremendously. Without this key component, tripping is akin to getting in a sailboat, having absolutely no idea which way north, west, east, or south is, just setting the sails to catch the wind and seeing where it takes you hoping that you don't end up going around in circles, stranded in the middle of the ocean, eventually to be eaten by sharks. Sailing is going to be much more efficient when you have a game plan, which entails knowing what the rules of sailing are and how to do it safely and efficiently, which is something that a lot of people who get into psychedelics have very little idea about. Most people have a basic knowledge of what's called set and setting, setting being the type of environment you're in. So are you tripping in your house? Are you in a club? Are you around people you know and trust or strangers? And you're set, meaning how you feel. Are you tripping at a time when you feel like you're in a good, jolly, positive mood? Or did you just go through a very detrimental breakup? Are you going through depression? Are you prone to depression? Do you have a mood disorder? And this is kind of just skimming the surface. This is the basic knowledge that most people have. But what I've learned through my experiences is there is something that trumps set and setting. Admittedly, it can be kind of included in set, meaning how you feel, but it really truly does move beyond it. Let's just cut right to the mother effing chase here, guys. The number one reason why most people both have bad trips and are always open to a potentially bad trip is because their mind is simply put out of control. Which begs the question, how do you get your mind in control? And doesn't this contradict what most people say about the rule of psychedelics being that you have to let go of control? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Here I'm saying you gotta be in control, but to really trip, you gotta let go? Well, just give me a moment to explain. An out of control mind translates into an undisciplined mind. It's somebody who is, in their day-to-day -day life, victim to whatever thoughts pervade their attention. For example, say they think of a chocolate bar and they can't help themselves, but then go and eat a chocolate bar. Say they think about watching their favorite show, even though they know they would rather study. They can't help themselves, but go and watch that show and say procrastinate on studying until they absolutely have no choice. Or say an individual who is just living in their parents' basement, who really does just do absolutely anything that their mind commands them to do at any time because they don't need a job, their parents are paying for them, they're not in school, they're just coasting, and they're feeding themselves the excuse that this is them taking some time off so they can relax and learn who they are or figure themselves out. We all know that that's fucking bullshit, and you're just being extremely lazy, and you are most likely the type of individual who is at the most risk for having an overly negative experience. Because if you can't manage and intercept your thoughts in a healthy way in your day-to-day -day life, you're not going to be able to manage your thoughts during a trip when the level of chaos reaches ungodly amounts. During a trip, your mind can play all kinds of very dangerous tricks on you. It can get you stuck in thought loops where you might be convinced that you've died or you're dying or that you died at an earlier date and now the rest of your life since that fatal incident has just been a dream in which case you might even convince yourself, convince yourself that you gotta die again or, you know, kill yourself in order to reach back to uh, your consciousness that's up in heaven or whatever the hell you might believe. Simply put, tripping with an out-of-control mind is one of the most dangerous things that you can do. And this is coming from someone who had the bulk majority of their psychedelic experiences, even their good ones, with having an almost totally out of control mind. One of the largest reasons why my trips proceeded to get worse and worse is because my level of discipline or control over, simply put, which thoughts I wanted to grant my attention to began to diminish. It lessened and lessened and lessened to the point where I almost became, well, I did become a complete victim to myself, characterized by my stints of addiction, whether I was addicted to cigarettes in the past, alcohol, kratom, ADHD medication, whatever the addiction was that I was allowing to control my life. And it really was something I was allowing because I was not challenging those thoughts. I was not observing those thoughts. I was not feeling them all the way through and acknowledging 
that they have a purpose and letting them do their thing, I was simply following them to reach what I believed would bring me a state of comfort. Uh, unfortunately, the side effects of constantly seeking that comfort, constantly running away from uncomfortable things was, well, you know, I was actually just depressed and miserable in my day-to-day -day life. But a person who is in control, the opposite of out of control, will not respond in an emotional way, and that's the key here. They will not respond in an emotional way to every thought that pops up in their head. And that's what thoughts do. They really do just pop in and out. You'll notice if you try to control your thinking, no matter how hard you try, you can't do it. The classic example is thinking of a pink leopard. You thought I was gonna say pink elephant, didn't you? But now I've got you thinking of both a pink leopard and a pink elephant. And what if I say, don't think about me completely naked? You're actually thinking about me naked right now and it's uh, disturbing you. You're worried about having gay thoughts because I do look quite attractive in this trapper hat. Now you'll notice that you are very, very suggestible to outside influence. And the ego likes to pretend that it's not. The ego likes to maintain a level of illusionary perception of control over its domain. Ego is confused often, but ego just means the part of yourself that, um, it's like the body's defense mechanism. It's the part of yourself that is attached to the personality that, you know, maybe likes competition, that has opinions. Those are all aspects of the ego. When you begin practicing meditation, which is also the practice of gaining control over the mind, you begin to see the ego self as something very separate from the true self, which is the one who is simply put, observing the happening of life. You are not your opinions. All of the opinions you've collected, in fact, well, most of them have been adopted from other people and you've picked and choose over the course of your life things that other people have said, thoughts other people have had, and you found the ones that work for you and you've kind of made them the, your own, but uh, a lot of our programming is just that. We are socially conditioned to think and behave in a certain way that suits the agenda of the society that we may happen to live in. Your opinions aren't yours. Holding on to them as if you must defend them is not beneficial. And that is no means of control. Someone who has control of their mind is simply put no longer a victim to the string of thoughts that they understand they cannot control. Due to how suggestible we are, we have very little control over what we're going to think at any given time. Now, what we do have control over, and this is very important, is both which thoughts we respond to. Note, I didn't say react, because reacting to a thought is having no control. Control is choosing to respond to thoughts which we feel resonate with us at a deeper level or that we understand are healthy. Sometimes we might have a thought uh, that will bring us some kind of instant gratification or pleasure and it might feel good in the moment to follow that thought and to maybe partake in whatever it is, be it checking your likes on your phone or reading comments or watching a show, but you'll find that the more you give in to potentially pleasurable thoughts, the less pleasurable the action becomes. Anyone who's had a masturbation addiction will know that if you're masturbating three or five times a day, it no longer feels as good as if, say, you could manage to withhold for a week and maybe not masturbate and have some real sex, which will also release that oxytocin in the brain and give you a real fucking chemical rush and also a, you know, survival and replication type of vibe that you need to bond with other people to feel like a functioning, you know, proficient human. So giving into pleasure is a sign of someone's mind who, that is out of control. And now due to the addictive nature of our cell phones, a lot of us, simply via being part of this society and following suit, well, a lot of us are out of control. A lot of people are going to trip. Well, they're not gonna be able to help but to follow every crazy thought that pops in their head. They won't know how to let them pass by. This is something that you don't learn from tripping. As I've said, this is something that you learn from discipline. Now, when I say discipline, it doesn't have to be meditation. You could simply have the discipline to jog for 30 minutes a day, and that can be your meditation. Meditation isn't always just sitting on the couch. Of course, I do believe that there are going to be benefits in the 
stillness, the calmness that one can observe, and and the new knowledge that becomes available to someone once they learn through no longer reacting but observing the thoughts and letting them pass, once they learn the true depths of power that they have available to them at any time, it truly does change you from feeling as though you're a victim to not just your own mind but to the world, to feeling as though you have some very real profound say in the direction of your life. Because remember, thoughts aren't just these intangible things floating around in this invisible landscape privy only to our own imaginations. Oh no, everything which exists in the physical world first started its life as a thought. Thoughts become reality. Your thoughts are very powerful and you do not have to allow your thoughts to control your life because essentially what that is doing is stating that you are 100% suggestible to outside influence and you are absolutely not in control. If you want to have a psychedelic experience and if you want to not only have a good trip but gain some kind of a new understanding or help develop more confidence in your life, you need to come at it from the angle of being in control, of having no control. Understanding that what being in control really means during a psychedelic trip is knowing how to surrender. And you cannot surrender if your thoughts are out of control. You will fight tooth and nail to the very last breath to hold on because you will be giving in to every fearful thought that happens to manifest in the chaos of your mind. That is a recipe for a traumatizing experience. And for individuals who are prone to those types of thoughts, ensuring that their set and setting are absolutely optimal is of the utmost importance. Don't get me wrong, even someone who feels a level of control is going to be influenced just via the nature of how our minds work by their set and setting. However, someone who is disciplined is going to have the potential to really experience psychedelics anywhere. It all really just comes down to their level of discipline. Now, to be completely immune to set and setting would basically mean you'd have to be at like yogi status, which a lot of us aren't at. So I don't want to make it seem like if you're, you know, someone who says, yeah, bro, I meditate every day. I'm going to fucking trip in, a, in an airport on an airplane. It doesn't mean that you can get arrogant about it. Because being arrogant in and of itself is having an out of control mind. You still need to carefully select which thoughts you wish to follow, which thoughts you wish to pass, and you need to continue to exercise your control over your thoughts and thus your life in order to ensure that you are going to trip in environments and scenarios which will elicit the highest potential for your own growth. Now I understand this kind of contradicts what a lot of people say who state that there's no bad trips, and you know what, it's true. Even if you have a completely out of control experience, after it happens, assuming that you're safe and not traumatized and not physically injured or, you know, in the hospital or something, you have the chance to learn from that. Okay? We interrupt this broadcast for a very quick and important update. We're gonna begin shipping out the rest of the hoodies by November 24th, so you can finally stop asking me where's my hoodie. And secondly, I am going to be doing the Patreon draw for a free hoodie this Saturday. And I'm not just giving away one, I'm going to actually be giving away 10 hoodies. And currently only 400 of my patrons have entered their name in the draw. So if you aren't currently a patron, you can pledge as little as one to two dollars per month in order to enter the draw. And right now, since I've given away 10, uh, your chances are pretty good. Just make sure that when you join Patreon, you do go to the post that says enter your name here. Otherwise, you're not going to be included in it. And I probably shouldn't say this, but also if you're just joining Patreon to potentially win the free hoodie, you could always pledge $2 a month and then after the draw, you know, cancel. Which would suck for me, but hey. If I had known when I first started tripping just how important it was to practice a daily meditation habit in an efficient way, I mean, you, you can meditate every day and you can do it wrong. 
Like you really do gain a lot of benefits from say listening to a guided meditation. Like I started listening to the Sam Harris one and it's been helping me um, because you need to understand what you're doing. And there's more to it than just closing your eyes and listening to some music or just sitting there and thinking because that's not really meditating now, is it? That's still just following each and every thought. I will maybe go into more detail on this later. I want to keep this video short and sweet and to the point. I want to start releasing more videos like this where I just express a quick helpful thought for anyone out there who's wishing to get on this psychedelic train um, so that I can you know, help more people learn how to have the most positive and beneficial experiences uh, possible. I mean, as always, I don't recommend that anyone does trip. It is a very, very uh, challenging thing. Well, it can be challenging and it's really not for everybody. So you really do have to weigh all the pros and cons. And part of weighing that is understanding if you're in a place in your life where you're going to be able to manage your thoughts. Because if you can't manage them in sober life, in a trip, they're much more intense and they're a lot harder to let go. But it is possible. And I have experienced this. And when you have a trip that you've got control over, it truly is not only a blissful feeling, but a rejuvenation. It really just goes beyond words. It feels great, man, to no longer, you know, be victim to your mind. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a big thumbs up. And for those of you who missed my last post, because YouTube uh, actually kind of blocked it, sometimes they just kind of like shadow ban certain videos. I released a video where I compared the effects of 5-MeO to regular NND. And if you want to check that out, you can follow the link at the end of this video. I put a lot of work into this one. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it if you missed it. Um, but anyway, if you do support this content, you can follow the link to Patreon and, you know, pledge a dollar or two monthly to help the channel grow because, you know, we don't make a lot of ads and that is what allows me to offer this information to you full time, yo. Anyway, till next time, take care, all of you, and I will see you in the next one.